There's a new image generation model at the top of the AI text to image model leaderboard. It's on the leaderboard as Half Moon, and according to word on the street, that's a code name for Rev Image 1.0, which says it's trained from the ground up to excel at prompt adherence, aesthetics, and topography, or text. You can access the model at rev.art, and as of this recording, it's free to generate images with. You do have to sign up, either with Apple, Google, or your email, but it did not ask me for a credit card or any payment information. The Explore page showcases some of its capabilities with various styles, including realistic photos, line drawings, 2D or cartoon style, and incorporating text, some with instances of text in multiple elements of the image. Gallery results are great, but I assume they are the hand-picked best of the best, so let me show you some images I generated with Rev. Here's the inside of an abandoned textile factory. I used a really long AI-generated prompt with a lot of detail, and the images covered everything, including the lighting. I don't know if some of those machines are anywhere near accurate, so I can't judge that. For comparison, I used the same prompt to generate with Flux Pro, and these images have the same vibe and elements, although Flux seemed to really focus on the cracked floor. Next, I wanted to see what the outside of that factory might look like, and I wanted to give it a shot at incorporating text. All of these are supposed to have the company name on the building, a no trespassing sign, and an authorized personnel only sign. It did pretty well with that, and the images overall look good. I tried the same thing with Google Imagen 3. It did okay with the company name here, but didn't get the other two signs. It added a bunch of signs with AI gibberish rather than the text it was supposed to have, and then this one added some AI silliness above the company name. Otherwise, I like the images. Since Ideogram is known for incorporating accurate text in generated images, I gave it a try with this prompt, and the company name sign is spelt correctly, but the spacing is weird. It gave me AI nonsense instead of an authorized personnel only sign, and left out the no trespassing sign altogether. Another Ideogram generation got the company name sign right. Flux Pro just got weird with the lettering on the sign. In some places it's almost right, but has duplicates or blurriness that really takes away from it. Still checking out how it does with incorporating text, we've got Betty's Roadside Diner with some bikers, and there's supposed to be a Coca-Cola sign, which I guess is in the window or on the side of this thing that's supposed to be the front door. This version got the spelling right for the diner name, but the signs aren't great. But then this one did well with the signs, the spelling, and all the other elements of the prompt. And this one almost looks legit, except it looks like the road goes behind the diner and not in front of it, which seems odd. I tried this prompt with Ideogram, and it's got a different vibe going on, but it did okay with the text. Not awesome, but okay. Same thing with the second generation from Ideogram. Flux Pro thought some of the bikers should be on the roof of the diner, which I didn't notice at first because I was focusing on the signs. The main sign for the diner looks good, but the rest of the signage, not so much. Then this one from Flux Pro has an interesting look. Google Imagen 3 made a mess of the text and the signs here, but did better in this generation. In this one, we're supposed to have some old friends reuniting at a train station, and it covers the stuff in the prompt, which is really long and detailed. I didn't put it all on the screen here, or we wouldn't have much room for the image. Anyway, in this first one, I just can't help but wonder if this guy on the left is moving in to sell them insurance, or if he's about to open his hands and a bird's gonna fly out. This one's still using Rev, I just can't get past this bag or whatever that seems to be attached to this person's arm. This one's okay, but not super impressive. Then this this one, they look more terrified than reunited. Here's the same prompt with Flux Pro, and I'm liking it better than any of the generations from Rev. But then this one from Flux Pro just nailed it. You can just feel the moment oozing out of this image. And both of the Flux Pro generations used a shallow depth of field, so the text on those screens doesn't need to be legible, where Rev seemed to try and make legible text on those things, and it just didn't work. Imagen 3 with the same prompt gives a slightly different style, a wider shot, and it gets the job done. Ideogram has a whole different take on the lighting and the mood, which just isn't doing it for me. Ideogram also used the nonsense text in the background, so Flux Pro wins this one for just completely capturing the moment. Next up, we have a bus driver taking a break, and while the bus is supposed to be well-worn, it seemed to have the bus covered in dirty street snow or something, but it's a sunny, warm day. 
Lux Pro gave me something that looks like an old motorhome and a weird street scene, and also something that looks like a really broken down school bus and a strange streetscape. Imogen 3 put one dude in front of the bus while there's another dude driving that doesn't seem to notice the first dude's there. And then there's this one from Imogen 3 where everything looks like it's in the right place. Now we've got a janitor mopping a high school hallway. The first guy has some kind of super mop. This next one does a great job with the lighting and the texture of the floor, and the janitor has a typical mop and bucket. The locker with the basketball is missing a door and the one next to it seems to have some kind of weird door going on. I like the lighting of this version. Something about it seems familiar and legit. This one also has a pretty realistic vibe to it. Flux Pro went really dark and cinematic. This guy is using a big huge mop behind his back. And then in this version, I don't even know what's going on. Then Imogen 3, we've got a guy with a backpack and some sort of mop thing. And then we've got a basketball and a football and some sort of broom thing in a backpack. This is supposed to be a skyscraper reflected in a big puddle. And Rev gave me exactly that in these first three images. Even though I didn't say it in the prompt, I was sort of expecting the actual building to be somewhat visible along with the reflection of the building in a puddle. I didn't say that, so I can't be mad at Rev for not reading my mind. In this last one, it took a different approach and gave me a little reflection in what I guess is a rooftop puddle and included the actual building too. Flux Pro generated a beautiful image. We've got the skyline, the skyscraper, the reflection. It all looks great, but I think there's something really off about the proportion of that one skyscraper. This one from Flux Pro also looks really good. I think it's showing us the reflection of the skyscrapers through that opening. These from Google Image N3, it met the mark as far as the reflection in the puddles, but there's something off with these buildings. They seem to be either missing some windows or melting, or I'm not real sure. Here we have a determined runner in the rain, and I can see why it focused just on the legs and the wet pavement, since I asked for some details like splashing and whatnot. But these legs, I know runners have very defined leg muscles, but there's something not right here in these first few. The second two didn't have those extra weird muscles and seem more normal, at least to me. This one from Flux Pro does a really good job, incorporates everything in the prompt, everything looks reasonable. The second one, not so much. It doesn't really show the splashing uh, when the shoes touch down in the puddle and all that. Imogen 3 did a really nice job, I think, with this prompt of capturing the essence of what's going on. To create an image with a Rev model on Rev.art, if you're on this Explore page still, go up and hover over Explore and then click Create. Down at the bottom in the prompt box, you can upload an image to work with by clicking the plus button or just start typing a prompt. You can change the aspect ratio, turn prompt enhancement on or off, or use a specific seed if you want, then click Create. If you want to make changes, you can click Edit Prompt, and if prompt enhancement was on, it'll show you the enhanced prompt. Some of the words and phrases will be in bold, and if you click on any of those, it'll give you three alternatives to try. You can make changes there and then click the reroll button to generate new images. You can also click the instruct tab in the prompt box and tell it what you want to change, like make it a sunny day with a clear blue sky. Then if you click the button, it generates four new variations based on that instruction. To download an image, select it and then click the download button. You can also hold down on the shift key and select multiple images, then download them all together. When you're on the create page, if you have an image selected, the box down at the bottom is a toolbox for editing whichever image you have selected. To create something new, click anywhere that isn't on an image and then that box at the bottom turns into a prompt box for creating a new image. Overall, I think Rev is generating some good looking images. It seems to be following the prompt well and does a good job of incorporating text. I don't think I'm ready to ditch every other image generation model and only use Rev, but it's a nice addition to the toolbox.